Back to politics and what some are calling early signals that it may be a tough summer for the Obama campaign. From last week's jobs report to the Supreme Court ruling that could dismantle the health care law, the president admits he's facing headwinds. But could they get stronger? The Associated Press reports it this way. Quote, facing an election year summer fraught with political peril, the Democrats are struggling to revive supporters' spirits and counteract developments that could energize Republicans and solidify public opinion that the country is on the wrong track and in need of new leadership. Joining me now, Democratic strategist Chris Cofinas and assistant managing editor for Time, Rana Farah. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let me start off with you, Chris, because we haven't seen you in a while. I was stuck with Rana covering the John Edwards breaking news the other day. Not that I, I always want to hear her opinion. That's why she's here. But Chris, let me get you in on this headline from the AP. Is this much to do about nothing? Are we all going to be basically brain dead from summer fun and <laughs> reboot after the conventions? I mean, listen, you know, are there going to be challenges and headwinds uh, facing, you know, the, the Obama campaign, facing the Romney campaign? Of course. That's, that's politics. That's but what happens in But this headline is about the headwinds that specifically the president would be facing. And I make that distinction because the first read team puts it this way. Compared with Obama over the past couple of weeks, the former Massachusetts governor has been able to largely escape scrutiny. Part of this is by design with the Romney campaign. They keep the candidate in a bubble, and that's helped prevent day two stories on anything since he's unavailable for comment. So <laughs> first read points out, Romney's in the bubble, so that leaves President Obama <laughs> for legitimate questioning, and probably some that's not so legitimate because you need people to have some airtime here. But nonetheless, some of the points that I've made, the jobs, uh, the Supreme Court on health care, specifically the headwinds for the president, Chris. Yeah, listen, I mean, in terms of Romney, real quick, I'm not sure you can hide from these problems. So, I mean, that's one thing. In terms of the president, listen, when you face these type of challenges, I, my, my belief and, and the strategy that I, th that I think works is you've got to lean into them. In terms of the, the jobs, they've got to obviously go out there and make the argument about what they've done right, the challenges they face, and what they're going to do in particular over the next four years. The same, same thing with health care. If health care, depending on what the verdict is, gets turned down, the one thing that I think people make the mistake again and again about, the overall pieces of health care, the overall health care may be a bit unpopular, but in particular there are key pieces that aren't unpopular but are actually very popular that the administration can definitely go out there and focus on. If they do that, and they do that really well over the next month, these headwinds can then be turned back on the Romney campaign. At some point, they're going to have to force them, to, you know, in particular, force the Romney campaign to come out there and respond to some of these things. Rana, what's your take on it? I mean, headwinds can blow you over, or they can make you stronger, make your back stiffer. Well, I'm going to have to be the, the, the negative voice here. I think that June is going to be a really tough month for the president. Unfortunately, it's all because of forces that are really outside his control. What's going on in Europe right now is really serious and in about a week the Greek people are going to make a vote as to whether or not they're going to accept the austerity measures and that could trigger what we've been waiting for now for about two years which is this disintegration of the Eurozone. Now maybe they're going to get their acts together in Europe. If so, okay, we're still looking at a 2%, maybe, you know, 2 and a 2 uh, economy, but if not, we could be in for real serious economic trouble in the summer and fall. And to your point, some of the things that have been put in this pot that are beyond the president's control what happened with the recall in Wisconsin despite the fact that some within his own party were critical that he didn't travel there the president did not push for the recall of Scott Walker and that was certainly beyond his control absolutely and I think that this is what's so unfortunate so much of what's going on in politics and in the economy in the economy and in the intersection of both are really just you know global forces and national forces that he doesn't have a lot to do with but when you are the nation's leader your job is to react to it you own it that's it all right let me switch to something that caught a lot of eyes today, Chris, and that was Jeb Bush. We've talked so much about Cory Booker and former <laughs> President Bill Clinton not, you know, staying on message and not being the proper surrogate. Let's play what Jeb Bush had to say, and it's got some eyes saying that he, too, has fallen off message for the Republicans. Anytime an elected official in the world we're in today that appears so dysfunctional challenges a core constituency, not of their opponent, but of their own political base, I think we should pause and give them credit. And he was referring to President Obama having done that. That to me smacks in the face of Mitt Romney because one of the consistent things that we've seen is that he will follow the company line from when it was Rush Limbaugh going after the Georgetown Law student to other issues that go on and on and on. When has Romney gone up against his own base in this way that Jeb Bush says uh, a person would deserve some credit, Chris? 
Well, I think this actually is a potentially powerful angle of attack. When you look at, you know, Governor Romney, his position changes by the day. But in particular, there's no political courage. There's no standing up, if you, if you will, to the right-wing elements and saying what you did is wrong, what you did across the line. He, just, he doesn't have the courage to do that. And so if he's not willing to stand up to Rush Limbaugh, how is he willing to stand up to members of Congress if he's the President of the United States? How is he willing to stand up to foreign leaders when he's the President of the United States? So I think there's something really powerful there that goes to the heart of who Romney is, or actually, to put it more accurately, who he isn't. Well, uh, Rana, did Jeb Bush step in it? Did he bring up this topic that certainly is out there? He's giving President Obama credit for standing up to his political base. Could he say the same thing about the man who is certainly his party's nominee? Well, it's, it's, I, I agree, actually, that Romney flip-flops on, on most everything. And I think that that presents an opening for the president because he has been consistent, particularly around the economy. It's a bad moment, but he has had a plan. The reason we don't have a jobs plan right now, right now is not down to the president. It's down to Congress and gridlock. And again, these political forces that are really outside his control. All right, Ron and Chris, thank you both. I greatly appreciate you sticking around to talk with us. Thank you. Thank you. And opening statements in Jerry Sandusky's trial will begin on Monday. And we are learning...